of March. This is our first select board meeting um, of the new year after town meeting. And so welcome everyone. Um, so I don't have my list of who's here for public, but um, they could introduce themselves. Would the public like to introduce yourselves? Thank you. Oh, that'd be great. We have Ian Keel behind the camera. Hi, Ian. I'm Don McLean from Packer Corners. We're all from Packer Corners, sorry. <laughs> Harry Saxman. <laughs> Zeke Hecker. Evelyn McLean. Thank you for showing up today. Um, I'm going to, since we've all been through this before, I'm going to pass over the rules of procedure for this evening. Um, we've got a couple of new additions. We've got some uh, things to add to the communications from the Franklin Land Trust bike ride. We also have something to add also for communications from the Green River Village Preservation Trust. And we also have an addition uh, about updated appointees and board committee members for Wyndham Regional Commission from Guilford. Anyone else have any additions? Can we add on the, the Planning Commission's revision? The it's not final. I, Michelle was going to let us know oh, if it okay. was going to be Can we just final. get an update, maybe? Yeah. Okay. I can put that under discussion updates. Sure. So the Planning Commission. Anyone else? All right. Any, do we have any changes to the agenda order? No? Okay. Uh, first thing, the next thing that's up is we've got the approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion from anyone? I will make a motion to approve the minutes. All right. Does anyone second this motion? I'll second it. I can second it. You get to. <laughs> so I just had a couple more comments because I thought that maybe we can make the, um, the discussion with the, the sheriff a little more complete because it sort of said we asked like so and so asked a question so and so asked a question but the answers were actually never there for the public to know. That's a good point. That did okay. hit me too when okay. you say that. So you want to amend the. So you want to amend the minutes to okay. include um, you know, the, the response. Response the, the sure. sheriff's response to sure. to the questions. It just says the questions were posed. I think that'd be helpful for the public to. Good point. Absolutely. So I can go in and amend them. Um, so would you like to? Sorry, I'm trying to take notes. And, and, and so I think what you could do is um, put the draft minutes up um, to be in. That we're still up, and you've amended them already based on noting the amendment. He amended them to include what the movement was that what Troy moved last week yep. to update the liquor license. He mm -hmm. added Troy's motion and you did something else. Um, sort of something yes. about the grand list. So we can just say that it's still. Yeah, and then approve next meeting. Okay, yeah. so we'll approve them next meeting. Perfect. All right, so <clears throat> we will Thanks. hold off on the vote. Next up, we have new business. Uh, first thing on the new business, uh, I would like to welcome our two new board members, Randa Porsche and Richard Wysanski. Thank you. Our Thank you. From the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. welcome to your first <laughs> select board meeting. Um, anyone else have anything to add to you? The welcome to our two new members. Welcome. Welcome, yeah. <laughs> it's a grand new table. <laughs> Great. Uh, so the now that we have all our new members, um, each of you, as per town policy, needs to sign, read and sign and complete this conflict of interest statement. So what I'm handing out is a copy of the town's conflict of interest uh, policy as well as a questionnaire for each board member to complete and then something for them to sign and we can return to me. So because there are questions to answer on it, okay. maybe yep. we'll do yeah, it we're not towards do the it. end of the oh, meeting. Yeah, you can do it towards yeah. the end of the meeting just okay. so we can keep moving yeah. on. Yeah. Um, so the next item of new business is 
we need to elect a select board chair and vice chair. Um, do I have any nominations? I would like to nominate Sheila to continue as chair or to be elected as chair. I'd second that. Okay. Any other nominations out there for chair? All right. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Sheila has been elected the select board chair for <coughs> another <Sorry>. year. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask you. To, yeah, so you minute. Uh, just hold on two seconds because I can't really process very well and do two things at once. You um, can stop now. I could technically I stop. You can actually move. So I'm going to turn the meeting over to her so I can do my job. And so uh, we do need to have a vice chair, though. So I would love to entertain a motion for a vice chair for the select board. Filling choice shoes. <laughs> you can play rock, paper, I would like scissors. to nominate Gabby to be vice chair. Second. Uh, if thank she's you. Willing. Are you willing? Um, are there any other nominations? Any discussion? All in favor of Gabby being vice chair, co chair? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Thank you. So Gordon moved for Gabby. And Richard seconded. And Richard seconded. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Gabby. Congratulations. So we now have a new uh, chair and vice chair. Um, so the first item of business on this agenda is to agree upon 2017 goals. And um, I sent out a select board project sheet and one of the things on one of the worksheets was 2017-2018 goals and I think that um, two things one is I wanted to propose goals for us to consider but not to actually discuss how we would get there um, but just to sort of say what the intent is or where we want to go with these during the year and then to have discussions um, in the coming meetings about what the, what would be entailed in these goals um, so I can repeat them, but I didn't know if people had had a chance to review them before tonight's meeting. I reviewed mm -hmm. them, but I don't. I thought there was only one goal, though. There, there are five, so uh, four, so five, sorry. So the one goal is a, an annual goal, which is review of ordinances and policies to ensure that they are current, relevant, and up-to-date. Um, and my note on this, Gabby, was that this would take Either whichever one we're working on, the highway or the traffic ordinance. I would just bang out the traffic ordinance next week. We would just it's work on it. <laughs> yeah. And um, then we would get a status on a, a re status report on all of the ordinances and policies to make sure that they're up to date and relevant and stuff like that. And I had, this one is an easy one to do, so I thought that perhaps we could have this for our April 10th meeting to just go through it, finish it, look at things, make sure we know what the policies and the ordinances are. And, um, and just say, okay, yay or nay, we're on track, or we need to do something to revise them. <clears throat> this not, these are not in any order, but the second one that I had written, which is a carryover from last year and from 2015, actually is a, to um, initiate our capital improvements program. It's the capital program and budget <coughs> policy. We passed a policy in 2015, and I actually, it's on the website, but even though Peter won't like this, I made copies for people to look at. We don't need to discuss this tonight, but I will say that we decided some two years ago now, October of 2015, so not two, a year and a half ago, to look at our um, capital needs for equipment and for the other assets in the town and to create a five-year rolling plan for um, maintenance, improvements, renovations, whatever we need to do, and we haven't really succeeded in doing that this year, uh, up to date. This year we know that the repairs to the town office and the town garage are priorities, um, and um, so we need to create a plan. Peter is starting to work on uh, an RFP for the town office. Um, I know that there's some issues with the um, historical society, the windows. I don't know how much of a priority it is. 
And then Danny and I had some time on, speaking of the devil, um, Danny and I had some time on Friday to work through the capital equipment for the highway department and to get an estimate of what we need to do over the coming 10 years. So um, that is something that we will work on over time. Um, but we need to have an overall plan before we, in my opinion, before we allocate resources to a specific project or to a portion of a specific project. And this is something that the previous two select boards have talked about but not actually moved forward on. So, um, Anybody have any questions about that? The next one is to financially assess components, organizations of the town, and partly this came up even before our conversation, Richard, about the library, you know, how does the, what is the financial structure that's best for the library and for the town? And there are other like organizations in town where we might want to consider that. So again, a, just a sort of a general discussion to see where we are, what happens, what, what is the best situation for the town and for the organization? I think that the 501c3 question should be involved in that too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Another uh, goal that I put down is um, sort of envisioning the getting more involved as a select board in the economic viability of this town, and it mm. is something that um, that the is in the town plan, mm -hmm. and I actually quote it in this um, in this proposed goal thing what it says in the town plan where we want Guilford must strive to become a place to which our children along with other younger individuals and families, will want and be able to live and build a sustainable economic future through initiatives that extend beyond opportunities afforded in the, in the region, let alone in Guilford. Mm -hmm. And so this does come out of the plan. There are different activities in town that are underway that have to do with fiber optics or living communities challenges or a number of different things. Gordon and I have been involved in the fiber optics thing for since July. Gordon, Gabby, Peter and I are going to a conference on economic leadership, economic development next week. Wyndham Regional Council is working on this. Last week the, the town voted to um, support the work of SEVIDS. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that this is a time for the select board to be more actively engaged and kind of supporting community efforts in this direction. Mm -hmm. um, I think our work there would be to establish an agenda and to determine deliverables for a year from now and then to sort of convene and figure out how to move. This is all on this spreadsheet that mm -hmm. everybody has mm -hmm. access to. And the final goal that I thought of was just to ask the commissions to report to the select board three times a year. Um, we've talked about it in the past but we haven't actually set up a schedule and that would be the Recreation Commission, the Planning Commission, and the Conservation Commission. And anybody else who wants to, just to update the board and, by extension, the town in what's going on in, in another mechanism and on a regular basis, other than how they report in the Gazette or something. So I would um, love to hear other people's thoughts on this, whether we want to be thinking about other goals, how to prioritize them, think about it, get back to me on it if you don't want to spend time talking mm -hmm. about it tonight. But I, um, just to throw something out, I haven't looked recently at the town plan, but I was thinking about our Guilford elders as well as the young people and thinking that, and, you know, I just wanted to flag that as a concern, having heard that somebody who's really important to Guilford, Susan James, is, um, you know, she's in the process of considering leaving town and so uh, I mean we don't need to take up a whole lot of time mm -hmm. with that but I wonder even whether the needs of some of our older citizens and the needs of our younger citizens at some point could be considered together. So mm, contemplate and see if there's a role for the select board to play in the needs of our well, maybe to are... receive information about, um, I mean, I don't know whether, you know, since this is my first select board meeting, mm -hmm. I don't know what role we could possibly have in it. Probably not much, but uh, but we could, but there is, there's stuff going on with Guilford Cares, Community mm -hmm. Collaborative for Guilford, um, 
uh, the Living Communities, the, um, Guilford Preservation Inc. is looking into the feasibility of a senior mm -hmm. elder housing, mixed affordable housing mm -hmm. for elders and others in Algiers Village. So just knowing what there yeah. is and understanding the concerns, I think. Okay. I'm trying to think how we would phrase it. But, um, well, where you, where you read out um, under goal four, um, something about the youth. I mean, couldn't it be the youth and elders there? Well, we don't. There are specific issues. Well, there's actually an, a, yeah. a whole section in the town plan on that as well, on okay. Guilford Elder. So we can, um, so maybe vis-a-vis -vis the Guilford Elder. Some of those needs are very similar, and some of them are drastically different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm just saying that there's a different section that talks about mm -hmm. elders in, okay. in our village, in our town. So, so be aware of the needs of Guilford Elders vis-a-vis -vis the town plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think and see if we can... Uh, what can we do? What role can the select board play? Mm -hmm. uh, so, can I add one about maybe? So last year's one of last year's was increasing communication, which I think is something we should continue. And I think having the commissions come and report and get more information out that way is is part of that. What about um, increasing collaboration between different organizations within town? So that CC for G is doing, I mean, it's a really exciting time right now because you have a lot of different organizations <laughs> starting up and working at the same time. Um, and maybe there's a way to get them to be able to be more collaborative. And it also might fall under that economic development sphere as well. But I've heard from people that it's hard because nobody from one startup nonprofit knows what the other startup nonprofit. And wouldn't it be great if they could have like a brown bag lunch and just people who show up get together and share ideas? And you think this will, I, I, I don't listen, this is my I mean, bandwagon, though, so you're like totally on my bandwagon, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, nope, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of how we might, as a select board, act on that, mm -hmm. as a, or just facilitate it. Mm -hmm. And that <clears> might be all we need to do is, is <clears throat> do something, and that might be something that also coincides with what the planning commission's trying to do with their calendar, <laughs> where we're trying Excuse to... Uh, <coughs> collaboration? Mm-hmm. <laughs> among the various, sorry, <coughs> uh, Guilford entity and organizations. Is there any history or tradition of the select board acting as a facilitating no. instrument? No, but we do have our, you know, we do convene these um, work sessions or public sessions that, or sessions that the public is invited to that could be, that are often around a specific topic, like understanding the budget, or open meeting law, or DLAN, um, disaster local area networks. Though. <laughs> so we could do one on what are the different um, not-for-profit organizations doing in town, and how can they collaborate? You're involved in so many of those. <laughs> Um, facilitate collaboration among the various Guilford nonprofits and community just organizations. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other? Anybody else? Anybody have? We have one too, and it's not like necessarily. It's more of a more like aspirational, but um, for the select board itself to continue to in, to act and to be as transparent, open, and inclusive as possible. A good go. I think, as forgetting about just saying as possible, simply to continue to be active, <laughs> open, and transparent. Yeah. You know, I mean, because that's really the goal, right? <laughs> right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Anybody else have any Bless you. additions you. or <clears throat> comments? I mean, I think it's a good place to start from this year. So do we have a motion to accept these proposed goals for this 2017-2018 select board year? So moved. Second. Any more discussion? Thank you. Any, everybody in favor? All Aye. in favor, Aye. sorry. <laughs> everybody in favor? All in favor? Thank Aye. you. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you.
Is this a more ambitious uh, set of goals than usual? Uh, it's, it's pretty ambitious. It's pretty <laughs> ambitious, um, but I think we had something similar last year. We just okay. didn't make it. We did a lot, but we didn't. For example, the, it, the capital program was on, on last year. Um, I can't remember what else was on. I can pull that up later, but it's okay. No, just. And curious. I think those are the first two years that we had. Would you know if there have been goals before, Danny? Uh, yeah, there were some. You know, nothing real major. There were there was a few goals. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we're we're in continuing in a good co tradition here. Um, the next thing is the town officer appointments. Does everybody have a? Do you want me to read these? Or? Yeah. So I mean, there's obviously ones that were elected at town meeting day that we don't need to. We're go not through. doing that. No. Yeah. Okay. So and that list looks slightly different than the one online, actually, because there were some. Is this the one that I had edited? No. No. All right. Actually, um, ten works. officers and dates. Okay. That's actually the most up-to-date one. Okay. <clears throat> I just didn't print it again. No. So let me. So. At this time, we go through and appoint most of the commissioners and other appointments offices in town. Some of them might be tabled. So we'll go through them one by one. And um, Daniel Zembreski has the honor of being the first appointment on the list, which would be um, road commissioner for a year. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think I'm just going to put here a yes and not vote on everything. Can we applaud? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of course you can. It's never too much, right? Um, Penny Marine would be reappointed. We, is, so the suggestion is to reappoint Penny Marine as our delinquent tax collector. Um, I think she did an incredible job last year. Our prior constable was Walter Thorne, but he resigned, and we appointed somebody named Jacob Boyd, a younger person, who needs to get 168 hours of training in order to be qualified well, to do this. He doesn't need that much because he already has, he has most some. of it. Okay. He, has to, he needs to take four of the required classes, so he needs uh, 24 hours, I think. To regain his certification, and then to and then to do the 110 hours after that. That's correct. And this is even if the constable does not play a law enforcement role. That this is, is just the the state of Vermont's laws. So that that the law <clears throat> requiring that was passed in 2012 by the Vermont legislature. So that the. the the issue with Jacob's, Jacob's willing to do this, we've, I don't know if other people have met him, but I mm -hmm. met him, um, he lives someplace over there. <laughs> so he lives up here on Thank Brian you. Hill Road, the boy, right. the boy farm. <laughs> right, yep. boy farm. Right. Um, and he's working on getting to the point of getting his certification? Yes, he is. He's actively pursuing it. And then we had a letter. Yes. From is that a constable certification? Yes. That's and correct. it's a yes. lot of hours. He has to do something like somewhere between 24 and 50 something and then another 110 to be completely mm. certified. It's a lot. We had a letter, a select board, from a man named Chuck Carrier um, who was interested in the position of town constable. Um, and he has experience as an auxiliary police officer for eight years within the city of Holyoke, Mass. He said he achieved the rank of corporal and was promoted to field operations supervisor. Um, he was responsible for law enforcement, administration, proactive patrolling, training, traffic accident investigations, and public relations tasks, among other things. I've always believed in serving my community, and as a new resident of Guilford, I'm looking to be involved. So I met Chuck Saturday, nice guy, younger family moving into the area, um, but he's, his, he's from Massachusetts, so he would have to go through a little bit more training than Jacob would have to do in order to be the constable. So 
and he also said that he would he's got emergency training so he would be interested in serving as a you know on the emergency mm -hmm. volunteer team basically he wants to contribute to the community and get to know people in the community so right now I kind of think we should thank him for mm -hmm. um, volunteering to be constable but still appoint Jacob conditional upon satisfactory completion of um, his certi certification. I, I agree and I also think it's important since the select board went to Jacob mm -hmm. with the request would he be interested in this position mm -hmm. last go around here that he, he, he was willing he's jumped up and, and you know, is prepared to do it, so I think it's important. Have you all met him, or has yeah. everyone met him? Uh, Jacob. Well, I yeah, we've I've, met him. I have not met him personally, but I've I've met him through various other people who are very confident in his ability. Have you met him, Dan? Yeah, no, very well. Yeah. He used to be on the sheriff's department. That's right. Yeah, he did yeah. for a couple of years. He was on the sheriff's department. Um, so, and so I we just and we just appointed him. Like, right. Yeah, but still, it's it wasn't that long ago. Exactly. Did you appoint him uh, conditionally? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this appointment for, as constable would still be conditional. I'll get back to Jacob in another minute. But the next appointment on the list. If I can just say one quick thing about the Jacob's appointment. Is, yes. Uh, according by state law, he actually has six months to complete that first fifty-eight hours of training or whatever he needs to. Um, get up to that point by so by yeah so according to the state statute that was passed in 2012 September? so yes by September the state provides the training <laughs> that's correct but we pay for it yeah the town pays for it we pay for the training and we pay for the hours that he spends training yeah so it's a lot of money <clears throat> can I just ask one other general question pertaining to this there was some discussion when these names came up before that and then someone was going to contact each of them to make sure they did want to, in fact, we did. Okay, so that's oh, yeah. this is that's already been yeah. completed. There Thank hasn't you. been a couple of them. There haven't been a responses from, but we will get to right. Yeah. You'll, so you'll specifically. Thank you. Um, for emergency management director, I'd like to just say that as your interim emergency management director, I'd like to appoint Peter, um, conditional upon his completing the ICS trainings that are required in order to be an emergency management director. Um, and so I kind of hope that would be done by April or May, you know, and I'm working to clean things up and stuff like that just to make sure that everything that gets handed to him is in order and, um, Can you is that a very big job? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you were asking? Uh, no, I, cause I know it's a big job, but I was asking how would that work with pay and his hours and his town hours? Would they be outside of town? Yes. Got, how would that good. all be yep. Great worked question. together? Yeah. So the, the idea is that for three years, sorry, for this fiscal year and for the fiscal year 2019 and 20, we have a grant from the state for, I think it's $5,000 stipend for That's emergency correct. management director. And it's not a lot, but this is kind of a volunteer job anyway. Um, hopefully Peter will move into town. <laughs> no, be more willing to volunteer his time. So the, the idea... Although this role does not have to be held by a town a resident. resident. Correct. But this role does, sorry to interrupt, but this role does interact very closely with my position as town administrator. <laughs> so... You could talk to yourself. I could, you mean more than I already do? Yeah, all right. So the so to, to finish the answer so for the until June of 2020 we have money to pay for that job we have both I mean assuming that the grant will come through again but I'm pretty confident that it will we have both administrative support and emergency management director support it's nothing like what we had from Vermont Yankee that was I think twenty one thousand dollars a year beginning in fiscal year 2021 if the town decides they would then have to budget in a stipend for the emergency management director or it would have to become a volunteer position and then we'd have to figure out if we could find somebody to volunteer for all that work right which is why i'm trying to figure out if there's someone from the town who we could sort of get in a you know a position where they know it would be like steve lemke does a floodplain management completely volunteer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um 
So I was wondering, what about this gentleman who wants to get involved and has <coughs> So I talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, because he has some emergency, and I yeah, said it's I a primarily a voluntary position. One of the things that you could do is perhaps be a co-EMD, because right now he doesn't know anybody in town, he doesn't know how mm -hmm. things work or anything like that, but maybe, I said, maybe we could bring you up to speed on this because he's got the background. Right, that's an easy I don't know that he has a certification. Get him in yeah. now when he's... Does he have, <laughs> so he's yes, motivated. I, I actually will say that I did um, propose that yeah. on Saturday when I met with him. So, yes, great minds. <laughs> But um, so the so the appointment for now would be Peter. So did for, he not want, did that gentleman not want to do it or? We're not talking about emergency management director. For Chuck, we're not talking about putting him into an emergency management director position at this time. Right. Did he, and my question is why not? Because he doesn't know people. He doesn't know the the. the but he would have Peter and you to, and us to help him, right? Uh, it seems to me. I don't know how other people feel, but I felt like um, it was pretty hard for me to step into that role, and I do have some background, um, and so I don't know, you know, if we wanted to appoint a complete newcomer to town to this role right away. I mean, as a volunteer, the direct. Are you suggesting? Yeah, I don't know what you're suggesting. Are you suggesting? No, I mean, I assume that we would pay him just like we would pay anyone else, but with the idea that he would know it was a volunteer position if he wants to. So I, my thinking, it could be, I mean, we could consider that. My thinking was that we would sort of initiate him into the town and get to know him and see how he works with people and, you know, how he deals with things and stuff like that, rather than putting some somebody who's relatively unknown to the position right away. Unless unless there's value a great deal of value added for Peter to be have both positions. I mean, is that a value added phenomenon? It, well, well and, and before you answer that, all, all I'm going to add to this conversation is when we went through our vigilant guard vigilant guard exercise and I spent I don't know. I was I was probably only down there physically for like six hours, but watching the Katie was our town administrator time, and her role in that was huge. You know, she was a big part of it. Now, as town administrator, she's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. That's that. There's I wouldn't argue with that. The one thing I would be cautious of is putting an individual without the experience and not in in. You know, I'm looking at Peter saying, well, he doesn't have any emergency management experience that I'm aware of. You know, Sheila's here who went through it, so I'm a little <laughs> bit more comfortable. And I think Ron would help if, if requested. He said he but would. I, what I don't want to see is us set up someone to fail in that job moving forward. I think, I, I, don't, I don't know the background with... Um, everything that Ron had to deal with, but I'm not sure he was supported to the degree that he needed to be to be extremely successful in that position, and that concerns me. I don't want to see that happen again, whoever the individual is. My feeling when I heard that Peter, when Sheila proposed this with our town administrator being involved with it, I personally thought it was a good idea because the town administrator's role during an emergency situation is there. So. It, it, it would, to me, kind of be overlap. Now, the stipend, I think, is maybe, you know, we, we have the ability to have a stipend for three years, and my concern was after that, what do we do? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't want to necessarily see the town's budget increase by $5,000 mm -hmm. if we didn't have to, we had to volunteer. Not to say that the town administrator might not volunteer past that, who knows? But, you know, I guess, I'm not sure that adds any clarity, but the, the role, for me anyway, is it's, it is kind of a duplication from a town administrator standpoint, so I'm comfortable with that. And I certainly don't want to put someone in that role because it's such a big role. I don't want to see him fail. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about that from just what mm -hmm. I saw. With, now, not all the, these exercises are as deep, I think, as that vigilant guard exercise <laughs> we just went yeah. through. But I guess my question is, what do you think about having duplicate people, like having the town administrator be one person and then splitting up that role, but is that big? And then if there's an emergency and one of them can't get there, we have, is there a purposeful duplication that we want to have, maybe? I so don't know. We have, um, so the town administrator, 
Actually, the select board is the one is Correct. the is the agency mm -hmm. that has a lot of authority and a lot of responsibility in an emergency. Um, I can. Boss. <laughs> so no, ser there's a lot of. It all says the select board. Uh, it very rarely says the EOC, the um, wow. or the uh, the EMD. So. Um, and so, that is the benefit that Katie brought to it. And um, <coughs> I think I've lost my train of thought. Um, if we have co em right now we have Herb Myers mm -hmm. as, right. um, as the co-EMD, and I think we should have more than one to mm -hmm. bring people up to speed to be able to step in. I mean, I feel like I now have sufficient background in order to be able to sort of step in and know who to call and, and mm -hmm. what to ask and stuff like that. I've not been through an actual emergency, mm -hmm. um, but Katie still lives in town. We're all here, you know, Danny's here. He's the big responsibility. <laughs> Um, we have the shelter, I, I just talked tonight to the church shelter chair, Fred Ashworth. So we have a lot of people who pull together and make it work, but it's, it's the community that makes it work really well, I think. And what do we think was the problem with why you feel wrong set up to fail? I'm not sure he was set up to fail. I'm not sure he was set up to fail. I'm not sure he was supported okay, as what well does from... Mean? What does it mean? Yeah. I, you know, I, don't, I, I hadn't been here long enough. I'm not sure the select board supported him to mm -hmm. the degree it should have. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that uh, Herb didn't support him to, you know, I don't know. I Dick, don't know. Yeah, that's what you know, so it, 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 it's hard for me to second, you know, Monday morning quarterback and say, I think this, this, and this. Just from observation, though, mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel that. You know, I, I, it was just an uncomfortable, you know, it, it wasn't a smooth transition. Now, it was an exercise. That's what's right. supposed to happen in when an exercise. We learned a lot from that yes, exercise. Yes, absolutely. Lot. But I did, you know, uh, Katie's role in that, mm -hmm. you know, was kind of to start picking up some of these, you know, to assist. And, uh, you know, that helped for sure. You know, I just, I don't want to see, I, I just want to see who's ever in that role. I want to make sure the select board definitely supports the individual or individuals. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, that's the thing. I would like to fix the underlying problem so we don't have another situation. Right. Like, he, I know so, it was uncomfortable on a number of levels, right. and I'll just leave it at that. Um, so, Gabby, so, I think we did that with the um, the, re the report, the after report, mm -hmm. and, you know, after exercise analysis. We set up goals and things that we need to do, things that we need to learn, things that we need to be better at, how the EOC itself needs to work and stuff like that. So I think we are on track to doing that. I kind of dropped it since November and I started picking it up again last week after the um, <clears throat> after the uh, town meeting. So it is, um, Katie worked a lot with me on it. It is the intent to make it a really clear actions, steps, you know, who's involved. Mm -hmm. Like I have this huge spreadsheet now of all the volunteers and how to get in touch with them and what the roles mean and stuff like that. And we are going to a public information officers meeting next week to learn about that. So um, I think we're moving in that direction to make sure that that doesn't happen. I think we had we were lucky in having Herb Myers for yes. years who mm -hmm. knew everybody mm -hmm. and knew mm -hmm. what he was doing. And then Ron had to step in and kind of, I don't know what happened. I wasn't around for the beginning of that. So I just feel like we're, we're better positioned to make it successful going forward. And do you think it should be a select board member that also plays that role? In what? Uh, the EMD. I think I'm the select board has to, has to be involved. Has well, to aren't involved. we? Emergency, emergency management director. Okay. But we are involved. Yeah. The, 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 the chair is automatically, I, it, regardless of fall. whether but there's I, an I EMD. I feel like I know. And I, um, like so you're going to? Because I'm going to Have you passed the level one? Well, we have to, to do it. We're supposed to do yeah. it within... And I haven't done it, but we're supposed to do it within three months of feeding the select board. You know what? We should something. probably talk about the emergency so. operations plan another time. But right. but it is on our agenda <laughs> okay. for April to um, to it's figure to readopt it because it has to be readopted and it's re updated. It has to be updated and adopted. And so I went through today, and there are um, select board. Select board, select board, the roles. So y'all are going to have to read this and, and understand it. And there's training. And we might there's, have a yes. And Ron pushed me to do it. And you yeah, know, all the select board members are supposed to be. I mm. want to say level one trained in emergency management yep. procedures, and it's a. And the chair has to be two and three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, 
So we are going to talk about that, and that might be a good topic for a workshop with the mm -hmm. select board um, very soon, actually, because we, cause we could true. talk through this plan. I, can we do that before appointing the EMD? Because I'd like, to, I just, you know, and I wasn't at the Vigilant Guard because there was that whole mishap where select board members somehow weren't notified, so... So I we can just say table. You know, yeah. no, no, I was on that too. I wasn't <laughs> like, notified I either, but I knew it was going on. So. Neither was I. I'll just say. I just want to say. I don't feel like I okay. know enough to. So we can it. table <laughs> the emergency management director because you're not losing me in but, the near future. There's hope. But, so. Um, okay. Before we move on, though, I do want to make sure that we don't uh, not answer Gabby part of Gabby's original question, which was if I am appointed. Does this count as part of my administrator roles or, or something separate? And as it is currently, this would be separate from my 40 hours a week as mm -hmm. town administrator. Mm -hmm. So this would be in addition to. We did talk when we created the job description for the town administrator if we wanted to add the EMD, and that that would be a change in salary. We, right. you know, we talked. We so that was yep. at that time we left it off. But that's what it was when mm -hmm. it was presented to me to potentially do this role. Right. So we have, this one is tabled, dog officer, thank you very much, Jacob Boyd. Mm -hmm. See you there. <laughs> so he's going to be the council to land the dog. Yeah. Officer. That's correct. It sort of makes it sense. It goes together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Exactly. And we've looked a long time for a dog officer, so I'm... Well, yeah. Mary, and we need one. And we need one. There's, I, turns I, I out had a Guilford dog resident issues. recently <laughs> asked me about that. He, so Marianne is going to be the, Marianne Lawrence will, has agreed to be the alternate dog officer again. And... Um, Fence viewers, um, Mr. Zambreski, would you like to tell us what you do as a fence viewer? Just if somebody's going to squabble on where the boundary line is, you just go up, try to figure out where the where the line is. With you? <laughs> and usually it was, it's Dan Engel and I in the ground. So Dan has said yes. Dan Engel has said yes. And yeah. I don't know. Did you get in touch with Merton Garland? I did not hear back from him. <laughs> Very. Do they work off a of survey? <coughs> the surveys for the we project. We try to figure out where the a lot of times your line <coughs> fences are. You know, your old barbed wire fence. Yeah. yeah. You just try to work off that, and you know, if somebody's cutting a tree too close to the line or whatever. Do you ever get calls? We've never had a call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we don't. It'd be know dangerous to <laughs> know. <laughs> we have one of these individuals. Well, how about we say? <coughs> Tentatively, Burton Garland, unless he says no. So we'll just put him as a maybe, and then you'll help. Yep. Um, the Conservation Commission is, we need a new member for to take David Gessner's place, and I believe that Linda has been looking for somebody for quite some time. Um, any volunteers in the audience to, um, to be a Conservation Commissioner? You know, uh, I think Linda was considering seeing whether Nathaniel might want to do it. I, I met some young people, you know, we have a great... What are those? There's <laughs> young people here, but uh, it's our job to appoint somebody. We don't, we, we can wait until we have an, a candidate mm -hmm. or until the commission comes to us with a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, and well, I, I know I, she's actively uh, looking at people and I can... I'll come back with an update yeah, or email an update. <clears throat> so we'll just leave that as open for now. And Linda has agreed to be reappointed. Um, let me go through the next. Sp uh, speaking of Nathaniel, his wife Taj is on did the Did she have a baby? She did uh, last Saturday. <clears throat> she was due on the 23rd. Yes, I remember. Last Saturday was a long time after that. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So there, the Recreation Commission will let us know if she's agreeing to stay on. Um, so there's not, it's not really time Which to re- that? She's on the Recreation oh, Commission. Okay, yeah. So it, um, her appointment, if she agrees to stay on, would be up till 2020. <clears throat> uh, so, so we don't really have to act on that. that. I'll just, it's not tabled, it's just they just need to let us know if oh, they need a new commissioner. Okay. Um, with regard to Wyndham Regional Commissioner Commission, um, we appointed Gabby before to be to take Katie's position, and I think we should, if you're willing, reappoint Gabby. Um, in Dick Clark was a Wyndham Regional Commissioner, and we have <coughs> both Peter and Steve Lemke volunteering. So in this case, we need to have a little discussion. Um, this Peter? This yes, Peter. Me. Oh. 
Um, Katie was there <clears throat> in her role as town administrator on, as a commissioner because she was always learning stuff and bringing it back to the board. Um, and I think that's pretty important. Um, Steve and I talked about this, his volunteering to do this, and he said he was he would be interested, but um, he agreed that it made sense for Peter to be appointed <clears throat> if Peter is willing. And he also agreed that he has a lot of other stuff on his plate. <laughs> um, so he, Peter, he, Stephen. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Although, Good. so, so did Peter. But uh, so, are you willing to be? I would be happy to. Yeah. And actually, I, a uh, little over a week ago, I went and had uh, an appointment with. Um, Chris Campany and one of his staff members about uh, some upcoming projects here in Guilford as well as just kind of um, getting to know him better and, and the relationship between Wyndham Regional and the town and I I can see why uh, Katie spent a lot of time down there and, and they offer us a lot of services mm -hmm. for the amount of money that, that we mm -hmm. pay and so I think that <coughs> Not that Steve wouldn't be capable, but I think that in my role mm -hmm. in, in grant applications and in any other features, mm -hmm. I see why it's advantageous to have this role makes a lot of sense. there. And then again, can it be a non-resident? It can, yep. I yeah. inquired that uh, when Sheila first started asking about it, I did ask Chris, and you know, he, Chris said if you wanted to, you could appoint someone from Connecticut, but you know, they, they, don't, they don't care. And then how does it work with, is that your TA hours then, or is that... Well, separate from your TA hours? That's up for you. I, I, I can't dictate what my job is. I don't know, that's my, I mean, that's my job. <laughs> how, did, how, did, how was it done with Katie, do we know? She was arrested, I don't know what she did. I don't know. Perhaps we could start there, a little conversation, just yeah. find out what yeah. we've done historically. Because I don't know if we budgeted. Okay. We, I mean, in my knowledge, we didn't budget anything for somebody to be. They you know, you're position. right, and, um, and Peter already works a lot. And he might be the AMD. <laughs> oh, lots of hats. It's the nature of small town life. No, I, you so should be aware of yeah, that. How many hours a, w a month is it? It's not bad at all. It's not many from what Chris said. It's, oh. I believe it's a once a month meeting, and then you can be on two different commissions. But so, you can be on the steering committee. I mean, I was on the Brownfields committee because my role at BDCC, and then I stayed on as a member of the public. So you can, they're open, you can go if you want to. So learn, maybe you know, it could be, something. maybe in two, if it's like three hours a month, that could fit into Peter's job. I just think we should know ahead of time and understand how we budget. I'm pretty and sure Katie thinking, you know, charged us for the time. I mean, I don't know what, you know. I don't know. I, I think we should have an understanding. I think it's advantageous <clears throat> either way. I mean, I, you know, figuring that out is important, but. I think it's no, I think you're right. Town the town will benefit. You know, we'll get, we will benefit to a far greater right. extent than it will cost us in right. terms of salary. Right. I would but I, you know, how it was handled. I just think starting maybe there and see what we used to do, whether it was budgeted or not, is maybe we have to inquire with Katie how that was. Well, I mean, I know from talking to Chris right now that the minimum it would be would be two hours a month just for the board meeting, but it depends right, on right with travel. <coughs> travel up there. <coughs> travel, yeah, Townsend. but I mean, oh, right. They're all like Townsend. So, whatever. Just putting it out there to resolve it before it becomes no, a problem. No, I think it's a good idea, but I think we should aim for paying Peter his regular hourly rate for these and his adjusting his time during the month to, to make those meetings and to just accommodate. assume that it can happen. You know, that something, something will give. I mean, it works for me. I mean, it does greatly benefit the town, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, I can reduce my hours with something else. Well, that's what, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's what's going to end up happening is, I don't, you know, work-wise, it'll just be shifting things around and responsibilities. I, what personally, we, I think so. Yeah. Go for it and yeah. see how it works I, out I, for the three months. If he approaches it that way, I think, from an expense side, we won't be increasing, you know, the budget, right? Right, if it, right. So let's try that and see sure. how it goes. and. Get back to us. If we have yep. to adjust something down the road, we could. Energy Good coordinator, question. Michael Marcy. Did you hear from him? Nope. No response. So we'll table that. Um, Ellie Mayona has agreed to be Green Up Day coordinator for the 18th year in a row. <laughs> um, 
Oh, here you are again, Danny. Tree warden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. So it's a similar defense view. Yeah, 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 but I get to kill trees. Yeah. <laughs> so it's better. Uh, you are the most popular person on this list, I'm just going to say. Um, the next is the rescue trustee, and Dan Ingold has agreed to do that again. Okay, here's another little thorny little discussion. Wyndham Solid Waste Management Direct District Directors. Um, Troy was our alternate, and Cheryl Franklin is our... I'm just going to... Uh, our appointment. You know, she's our officer mm -hmm. who goes to the Wyndham Solid Waste. So I met Cheryl today because I wanted to find out how the meeting went last Thursday. And, um, and I said to her, I don't know the history of your appointment. So um, she was a, she's a Vernon resident who owns property in Guilford and who is also in the trash hauling business. Mm -hmm. So as such, she's open to conflict of interest mm -hmm. concerns. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, she has been Guilford's appointee for seven years. Um, she was recruited by a resident, and this resident recently voiced concerns to me about the perceived or the potential conflict of interest. So mm -hmm. the same person who mm -hmm. pushed her to take this role on is now questioning whether it makes sense or not. <sighs> I have been to three Wyndham Solid Waste Management District meetings. And I've had meetings with Cheryl, and my experience in the last year is that she's, she does an excellent job of representing Guilford. She makes a priority of our interests. She always consults with the select board prior to voting. Mm -hmm. um, and, she does, and she does not act independently. And she does this even when they give us two days and to, to, to respond, and it's before, and it, they don't give us any select board time, meeting time to discuss this. So. I think we're fortunate to have somebody who knows the business, who understands the financials of the district, and takes the time to examine the data that they send out, which is voluminous and often quite confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and in some cases, I would say not really clear. <coughs> and up in the trash. <laughs> um, I have a question. And, and, okay, and these meetings are arduous. I can attest to that. Um, so, and she's willing to continue. So, sorry, your question. Oh, oh my question is, um, has she, as this representative, does she sign the conflict of interest policy that we what do? What a great question. Because maybe just having that in the record, you know, since experience shows that she's representing our interests, and this, I haven't signed it yet, but I'm assuming is uh, what? It's, uh, it's not, ensuring it's not that. limited to the select board. No, okay. So I think that is an excellent. I'd like to propose that if. My question is is it a conflict of interest? It hasn't been. Could it be? Well, I mean, if she is the. Because I know that I, when I. She, she sent an email or, or it was to in us, the yeah, Google yeah. Drive or whatever, and then I saw that she was the representative, but she was also owns Franklin mm -hmm. uh, Waste Rubbish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. rubbish. Yeah, it, it occurred to me, well, isn't that a conflict of interest? So the, the only question I'm asking is objectively, is <coughs> her being the, the, pre, the owner of the hauling company in, co in a real legal conflict of interest with her being a representative? Or is there something in the conflict of interest statement that says if it's not, if, if it's an altruistic, uh, if you're not making any money on it, then it's fine. I think that that's maybe what the conflict of interest says, that, that you... Well, honest to gosh, it would be really hard to parse that out. Like, she's there voting, but she's voting at Guilford's direction. Right. So I, I would just so. say, first of all, you can have, like, even on this board, you can have a conflict of interest, and it's up to you to, as long as you disclose it, Right. You can mm -hmm. vote if you want to and say, right. I know okay. that I can, right. I am being, I can be unbiased and so I'm going to vote. Right. Is that the like best thing for a select board member? Probably, it depends on the circumstances. Or you could abstain. You could say, you, you know what, I don't even want to have the perception. Yeah. So I'm just going to abstain and I'm going to recuse myself. The conflict of interest policy is really <coughs> to put it out there. So <coughs> has, everyone has all the information. People are like, oh, you know, 
Richard, you're actually a trustee in here, aren't you? And you're like, oh yeah, let me just disclose that. Okay? But I know I can I was going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but I'm going to say, I know I can be unbiased. And it just all needs to be out in the open right. and transparent. That's really what the point of this. Right. So, every, you know, the fact that we all know that Cheryl has, a has her own business, business right. yeah. I think is all we need to, I guess what we need to do is say, hey, are we, is she acting in our best interest? Right. And can she act in an unbiased manner in, in this position? I would posit yes, because... She's been extremely responsible. She's extremely knowledgeable. She always provides us information. She does it clearly and concisely. Um, and she votes the, the way, way the select want board vote. wants to, right. to vote. Right. She's never gone off like... She's not representing her own interests. No. She's representing the interests of the No, we're exactly. making a decision I after the select benefit. board had said something. Right. To she didn't, she didn't vote contrary to the no. select board ever. And I, I want to, you know, just kind of reiterate what Gabby's saying in my experience on the select board and then outside I feel that it's an advantage having someone who understands the business as well as what is going on geopolitically mm -hmm. in the state of Vermont at a whole nother level mm -hmm. I think it's a real advantage mm -hmm. for Guilford to have an individual like Cheryl and I mm -hmm. reiterate everything Gabby mm -hmm. said about her character I I think she's always uh, pushing forward whatever one the the town of Guilford wants push forward mm -hmm. so I, I, and, I, and she I, helps I, us she she teaches us she's right great. she, she, she teaches she's and she, direct about like i think yes. we should do this and here's why and here's you can why. question her and it's not she's not in my experience i feel she can act in un, she's acting and act but has acted and will act in an unbiased way absolutely and it's very very uh, direct and it's straightforward but and will answer questions yep. anytime yep. you know yep. it's very, <coughs> she's very respond. responsive yep. and, yes. and no question is a bad question so as long as she, as there's transparency in the relationship the, of the conflict of interest policy then some outsider cannot say that there's a legal problem with conflict of interest because she's already divulged yep. everything that's right. And for us, too. Yeah. It's yeah. out there. Right. And, like, maybe, you know, it just to have the information out there, maybe another select board member could be like, you know, do you really want to vote? Can you really be unbiased? Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't even have any voting capabilities, and I had to sign one when I was hired. So I think it's an excellent idea for mm -hmm. her to. And then it's public knowledge, right. and there's no question about whether it's out there or not. And I think that's maybe the important thing to that point mm -hmm. is that the, everyone understands, you know, that this individual is working in the best interest of the town. Mm -hmm. right? their own best interests so that's a good point so can we go ahead with it then we can mm -hmm. just, uh, she's she's willing if we're if we want to appoint her so i'll just write her name in here <coughs> now do we, do we need an alternate yeah okay is troy willing to do that i haven't asked he is him. not He's i not. did he did <laughs> he absolutely refused really? and so and what are the jobs of the alternate um i'll volunteer because i or it's just it's just knowing what's going on and being present if she can't be present mm -hmm. to vote and having discussions with her and because she's trained me. <laughs> You're just sick of going to meetings where you can't vote. <laughs> I know, I had to sit there. When she wasn't there and Troy, and Troy was, on, was the on, the on the phone. I'm, like, I'm texting Troy and telling, you know, oh. like, it was like, like text. Vote no, because <laughs> okay, I couldn't no, that's vote. Great. So. I think you're I'm willing to do it unless somebody else would really love the job. I think you're a great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so we we'll just put a yes there. Uh, hopefully, I'll, okay. Low level waste. Stephen Detra. Did you connect with him? Peter? I, I have not heard responses from Table. many of the people. Dan Ingold said yes. John Christensen, Ann was going to connect with him, and she's not back in town. So What's his uh, condition? What's he, his this is low-level low low level waste. waste. Wow. You mean nuclear waste. Oh. Um, Dan said something to me at the call the other day, which is, I think this is about to get more important. But then he walked off, so I don't know why. <laughs> um, so we may just, we'll, maybe we'll appoint Dan and leave the other two's tabled for um, If John doesn't want to do that, I would do it. Okay. I mean, it's not like I'm running up to do it, but I mean... You want to know where the corpse is buried. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's leave that one and we'll... Yes. Because we did okay. not want to remove that oh, no, position no. from him if he still John wants to. I do it. <clears throat> uh, the last two are the Bullock Education... What are you asking? Loan Committee, Catherine Mason. Um, did you manage to get in touch with her? I, 
table? Was that, yeah, we have to table it because I wasn't even sure if this is this an is appointment a, a, that the, you guys make. Yeah, I don't know either. And then it the revolve. Is. I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it is. is. It is. Thank you, Don. It's not elected. Okay, because I, I could not it's find not any elected, clear right. information about it. I'm sure it's a select board appointment. And the okay. same with um, Calvin Grandy on the revolving loan fund. That yeah, I couldn't find any much information about either of those. So, so I was we'll not table sure. that until you find. Yeah. The Bullock Fund is a group of three trustees who serve standard yeah. terms, and so every year you appoint one. And so, by the way, just for a clerical fix, it's called, it's now it's a scholarship committee rather than a loan committee. A number of years. Education scholarship committee. Just scholar. It's a scholarship and not a loan. It was originally set up by the family as a loan, as an educational loan that the students had to pay back, and then the family changed the trust. So you're calling it the bullet. Which delighted a lot of us. Committee. Yeah, just scholarship and no word loan in there. Okay. They don't pay it back. It's like a scholarship. Okay. We, yeah, I just I feel like we owe it to the people who yes. serve yeah. now to I would table like that. Um, or oops table or Richard. Okay, let me read through these quickly because I think we're all in agreement, but I just want to make sure we understand what we've done here, what we've discussed. Road Commissioner Dan Zembreski, delinquent tax collector Penny Marine. Constable Jacob Boyd, conditional, conditional upon certification completion by September of 2017. Tabled Emergency Management Director, Dog Officer Jacob Boyd, Alternate Dog Officer Marianne Lawrence, Fence Viewers, Dan Zambreski, Dan Ingold, Merton, maybe Merton Garland, so we're gonna table him. <clears throat> Conservation Commission, Linda Hecker, reappointment, Second opening, still open. Wyndham Regional Commissioner Peter and Gabby. Town Pound Marianne Lawrence. Floodplain Administrator Steve Lemke. Uh, Energy Coordinator Tabled. Green Update Coordinator Ellie Mayonen. Tree Warden Dan Zambreski. Rescue Trustee Dan Ingold. Wyndham Solid Waste Management Director Cheryl Franklin, Sheila Morris, alternate. Low-level waste, Stephen Detra, tabled. Dan Ingold, yes. John Christensen, or Veranda, but still tabled for now. Bullock, did I just mess that up? Bullock Scholarship Committee, Catherine, so tabled. Revolving Loan Fund, tabled. Do I hear a motion to accept the officers' a as appointments to as read? Motion as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any discussion? Sorry. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Oh, sorry, that took so long. I'm sorry. Oops. Richard. Richard seconded. Second. Yes. Um, next thing on the agenda is old business, Wyndham Solid Waste Management. So there was a meeting last Thursday night and they came at the district <coughs> members with a request to um, approve a loan of $150,000 and some other things. Um, and the meeting on Thursday Cheryl went to, I was, I, she said to me that I didn't need to go, but we, I told her that based on our discussions before, that Gabby and Gordon were a part of, that we were not in favor of continuing the, tra um, the transfer stations in the, in the MRF facilities, the, 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 the recycling facilities. So Lou Brusa of the select board um, talked the district managers into approving a $75,000 loan instead of a $150,000 loan. This loan was to meet a $122,000 deficit, which existed at the end of February. So in four years, the district has gone from 468,000 surplus to 122,000 mm -hmm. in the deficit. And in fact, I think the deficit is now closer to 150,000. Um, the plan presented by the board is to repay the loan in four installments over the next year the 75,000 instead of the 150,000. But they don't exactly know how they're gonna do it. 
they thought <laughs> they thought that um, so, maybe fifty thousand dollars that the one some, one of the supervisors the board thought he would use from the um, proceeds from their solar um, operations was already tagged for another expense mm -hmm. in the district. So they thought maybe there might be double accounting and they need to get back to the directors on exactly what their plan for doing, for repaying this loan is. <clears throat> the loan, however, may result in additional fees to the district member towns, but they don't know yet if it will or not. So could you just clarify, who is the loan from? I don't have a clue. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm assuming it's from the They're members. They're taking out a loan. No. The mem I, I don't know. They may be taking oh, out a loan from the bank. Oh, from? Or a note or a bond I, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <coughs> so I don't know. Do we have an idea, let's say, there's double accounting and there's no $50,000. What's the worst case scenario for an additional assessment on the towns and over what period of time? So right now there are 19 towns in the district. And I, I have no idea how they figured they that. Their that. accounting is obscure. They didn't discuss it, they haven't figured it out because they hadn't resolved the figure the issue of how much money they might have to repay in which installments. The they fiscal just, responsibility. I mean, man. So a boat was so they approved a loan not knowing exactly how it's gonna come out. In people's pockets. Okay. Cheryl voted no on behalf of Guilford. And And it passed. She was one of two votes to vote no. She was she and one other. Wow, very interesting. I'm not done yet. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. The um, transfer stations, there had been a discussion about whether they would keep them open. So the dumpsters in Brattleboro and uh, in the other transfer station towns, um, they, the board agreed not to For keep the MRF, those. you mean? The MRF, yeah. Okay. Can but, I ask a question? Did, we, did they already vote no MRF, though? They did yeah. vote no yeah. MRF. So this was a so re This was a re, vote that they, was re they came up with another proposal to keep them open. It was voted down again. Okay. But Help the them. old ferry road facilities will stay open. So right. you can haul your stuff, right. just like we said on town meeting day. But there will be new sticker fees. Sticker fees are now going to be $35 instead of $25. And in my understanding, and I'm sure there will be something on the website soon, this, buys, this sticker buys access to the facility. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you still have a per bag yep. disposal fee. If you have more than three bags, you, your gate fee is now going to be $15, not 10 There will be an additional dollar administration fee for any transaction. So if you're, if you're paying $15 to dispose of four bags, you have to pay an extra dollar for the administrative fee. And they're going to charge $145 per ton for construction waste. Just out of curiosity, one thing that hasn't made sense to me um, partially because I have curbside pickup, but so the town of Guilford pays whatever twenty four thousand and some mm -hmm. dollars per year for all of our residents mm -hmm. to have access to that, but then our residents still have to pay. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you pay for a sticker fee, and then you pay it like I do it, so I know exactly how it's done. And then you pay to per bag, or if you if you have more than three bags, then it comes by weight, and then you pay to to sell Paul. So what we talked about m a few months ago, maybe before you started, was membership in the district entitles you to education, um, three recycling, year. three or four days a uh, like year, sort I'm of sorry. four day, two or three years, four days a year of hazardous waste hazardous disposal, mm -hmm. right. um, access to the dump itself, and I forgot there's a fourth benefit, but it's not remarkable. So and I, and I have those I have those someplace, but um, I just don't remember them all. So yeah, the, all the towns pay a fee, and your fee is assessed not it's per number of people. Population. population. It's one hundred percent population. Yeah. It's not per by use. It's by yeah. population. We, they tried to look at taking a stab grand at doing list some or something like that. Grand yeah. list population, you know, percentage, but that was voted down. So that's the report. And are we going to put Any all other those, questions? New, those news fees go into effect at the new fiscal year, so July, July 1st. And we're I think they go into effect July 1st. How will that be communicated to the residents? Uh, I was going to say, we're going to put it online at least. I'm going to wait until they come out with an official statement. Okay. I don't, before we even contemplate what we need. What we provided at town meeting last week was what we knew then. Mm -hmm. 
and mm-hmm. I think you had indicated that the fees might go up in, on that page. Yeah. So they, yeah, as of the day prior to the meeting, none of that was public information. It was mm-hmm. alluded to on their website by the their executive director, but there was no direct statements on mm-hmm. what Sheila just said. Mm-hmm. And I think they have an obligation to part of their education process mm-hmm. to alert everybody to what's going on, either mm-hmm. through the paper or through, you know. My concern, though, long term is liability of the town with, <coughs> with people what the fiscal things. management that you're representing that I've heard over a period of time has not really demonstrated its ability to manage a budget. And, you know, I'm concerned about that down the road. I don't know I what the solution is. I think other towns are, and there are a couple other towns that are considering withdrawing from the district. That's a big that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it also so, seems like it might there might be more necessary loans that well, might then my, just be put onto the taxpayers exactly. in the future. And that's the concern. If we're thinking that we're still in the in the red by more than <laughs> So I think there comes a point at which right. we have to do the cost benefit of being independent from right. the district right. and creating our own waste exactly. management plan mm-hmm. which is expensive. Or do we continue paying a fee for a uh an enterprise that in itself is a, lo- a money losing enterprise mm-hmm. so far. Now maybe with the compost and with the solar business deal. You've got compost, right? you've got the solar, and you've got all the equipment that was doing all the recycling for them. That I, it was my understanding, if they're not going to do it, they're closing it down that they could sell. They might, but mm-hmm. it, that's pretty old equipment, and they haven't had a capital equipment plan that mm-hmm. I Which is know part of about. again yeah. an upcoming new problem. Just a quick question. Is there any oversight besides the willingness of the towns to go along with this? I mean, do they answer to somebody? So there is this board that every that all the towns belong to. There's a finance committee. There are the employees. Okay. Um, what I forgot to mention is that Lou Brusa, who was the head of the directors, resigned. Yeah. That says a lot in itself, was, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah. I think he was instrumental in um, sort of representing the towns. He was from Jamaica, I think. So. And I don't know that I don't know anything about that. I just know that he okay. did resign. So. so is this on our agenda in the future? To, I mean, it seems like now's the time we really need to dig Maybe into we need to set up the goals. I agree. I mean, this has to be, in my mind, I think this is a priority for this, for this upcoming. We have to make a decision. By which we need to decide so we don't we don't go into the next fiscal year exactly. again. That's by September. Okay, so this is actually pretty, you know, like six like, months. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to figure out who's going to handle that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I just added that to the goals. The next item on the agenda is post-town meeting discussion. Does anybody have anything they wanted to say about town meeting? Seem pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I had, I don't know whether, well, part of what I came away from town meeting with was that uh, I wondered, I had a question about whether there was any official liaison between the select board and the school board, you know, and I just didn't know. Okay. They are completely separate entities, completely different governing structures. Although we've been attending a number the, between, the, I think, yeah, me and Sheila and Gordon, a number of you know uh, meetings because of what's been going on with their budget in Act Forty Six. So right, while there's not official liaison, we've been mm-hmm. trying to keep in, in touch. Their budget is passed independently of the town's budget. Mm-hmm. I just meant about communication, you know, but it seems like it's. It's pretty good back and forth, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. And they've done a good job of coming, coming to the select board and, yep. Yep. and saying, you know, this is what's okay. going on because Act 46 mm-hmm. is such a big issue that they want the town to be yeah. as involved as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Planning Commission, the addition to the agenda was that I know from Michelle that the, the public hearing is, is probably not going to take place on April 3rd on the energy section of the town plan that they're trying to reschedule for April 17th, but she did not write and confirm that today, so that's why I don't want to say anything more than that. And is it, I mean, I was just surprised, I just had no, I was surprised to hear that it was at town meeting, that's why I wanted to bring it up, because I wasn't sure what was 
just sort of the background about what's going on. Is it only the energy? Yeah. Is there a draft that's going to be put out there? Because I haven't. There's seen a draft that on our either. website. Yeah. So they. It's so on our website. It's on the website, and um, and they in uh, June of 2016, the select board asked the planning commission to re to really rework the energy section of the town plan, and they have done that in collaboration with Wyndham Regional Commission and uh, state advisors too, and it looks good, and they, now they have to have public comment on it. And so this, their 45-day notice, I think that's <coughs> perhaps what Michelle is working out now, so. Okay, and can you give, um, add the draft to the Google draw? Draft of the draft um, of the, the section of the town plan. <coughs> the energy oh. section. <coughs> I will see what I can do. Thanks. And so the only uh, the only thing they're revising is the energy. We should, yeah. Nothing else. That's it. Yeah. Uh, because just for Richard and Brenda, no, there's a public notice period. The planning commission needs to do a public hearing. Then the select board needs to do a public hearing a certain amount of time afterwards, and then it's the select board that approves. The changes plan. in the town plan. Correct. What gave rise to the energy section revision? I, I it was not, so I know that because <laughs> I was on the planning commission. We, it wasn't fleshed out. We okay. didn't have time to do it in accordance with Vermont state requirements and with what's happening currently. And so we just said when we presented it to the town in 2015, this is not complete. Um, and we're going to have to, I think it was 2015, June of 2015. It was my so, first year on the board, so yes, two years. Yeah, two, so years two years ago. We just said, hey, we'd like a little more. Yeah. Can we and work so, on that? Um, and so we approved it with the caveat that there would be a revision yeah. down the road. Uh, are you getting ready for a snowstorm? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to snow, Danny. Yeah, they say it's fall, too. <laughs> <laughs> Any other updates for us? Yeah, I'm going to give you what you want the bad news. Or your snow oh, or my. We're all bad news. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the graders broke down right now. Yeah. Uh, um, Hopefully you don't need it tomorrow. Yeah, we got the loader all ready to go. We're going to plow the loader. All Has the truck Brattleboro borrowed our grader before? Yeah, but they're going to be busy Sorry. there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got water in the, or fuel in the antifreeze. So we, he's trying to get, he thought it was an injector seal leaking, but he tore it apart on Friday and it's not. So now he thinks, it, the mechanic thinks it may be a cracked head. So he's waiting to hear from Cat. He just can't throw a new head on it because it's, it's under Still warranty. Okay. So he's waiting to hear okay. what they got to do or whatever. So he's supposed to be back tomorrow to be putting it back together. So hopefully he's got everything all ready to, you know, put it back together. But so. And well, they, luckily, there's not a lot of other snow on the ground right now. Yeah, it's, yeah, That's so a positive. All the trucks are. All back, they're ready to go, and if it snows like they say tomorrow, they're talking a couple inches an hour, so we'll be pretty busy. So, and the roads are almost frozen. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're yeah. froze up a little bit, so I mean, it should, it's going to still be slow going. But they're just they're saying we may have whiteout conditions, and so it's going to be slow going. So, but other than that, that's about it. I mean, we've been grading some roads here before it froze up for the greater. Fit the pickle, so. <laughs> <laughs> much, much tree damage, Dan? We had, we spent quite a bit last, last week riding, getting tree, you know, trees down and stuff. Yeah. I think that I, we worked for like an hour Friday morning and he must have had four phone calls about trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. In one hour. Yeah, we, I mean, we just kept going around. I mean, he went down. Like a culvert in the springtime, you can unplug it. And Ten minutes later, it's plugged back up again. You know, so. but uh, we stayed pretty busy just going around, and make throwing limbs out of the way and trees and so. But, yeah. A lot of wind. Yeah, there was a lot of wind. Yeah, actually, Alan and I a week ago we had a close call. Um, we had a tree down over on Bonneville Road, so we went over. It was on the wires. So we went over and we set the cones out. So we were waiting for the power company. We was driving back and we had some limbs in the road. And uh, so we stopped, picked the limbs up, threw them out of the way, and I just happened to look up 
Alan was one step behind me and I was one step from the front of the one ton. We had a big limb come down and land on the, the one ton. Wow. And at the same time, I look up, looked up again and there was another limb landed right between us. And they were, they were limbs like that. So they would have hurt us. So, oh, that's but, terrible. Yeah. So, but that's, you know. Phew. The way, the way it goes. <laughs> But other than that, everything's we're all set and everything's good. And we haven't had much mud to speak of, so which has been real good. Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of due to that is because it was so dry this summer. Mm -hmm. There's no moisture in the ground, so. But. I was very impressed with Al's tribute to you and the well, town. All the guys. You mean all the guys? Well, and, and not to, all, but you know, I I know Pete feels the same. I just yeah. he what, but what he said at town meeting, I thought was. You know, you get paid to do a job. You do. I know. I, I learned from a, a town Sheila on Friday. I had one of my the press, predecessors when I first started working for the town was Harvey Cutting. Mm -hmm. All right. And he was yep. like a father figure to me, okay. and he always said to me, he says, "You keep your head above water, be honest to the people." And do your job, and he said they'll support you. Yeah. Yeah. That when I, to this day, I, I, I you know, say that. Absolutely. As your people do. Yeah. Yeah, people all over town are raving about how great, how much better our roads are than <laughs> they are elsewhere. When you leave town, then you yeah. start skidding. But well, I mean, you can't. We can't be everywhere at once. Yeah. I mean, right. Well, Guilford weren't be built in a day, and we ain't going to get around in a day. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gabby and I, when we first came on the select board in 2015, we spent seven hours riding with Danny in his truck around town. On we, I think we probably hit 90% of the roads. Yeah, we hit about 90%. <laughs> and it was an eye-opener. Is that a benefit of being a it's new It's totally a benefit. Yes, we're riding around. <laughs> hey, if I, after the snow is yeah, over, if I get oh. a call. And by the way, welcome aboard. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I would love to ride around. Yeah, really. no, we'll set up a trip. It could be one of the select board work sessions. Yes. Yes. Okay. All day. It takes, don't realize how many roads we've got down. It takes forever. Yeah. It, that was a long day. We had a great yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, thanks, Dan. <clears throat> so, I'm sorry. Sorry, because I'm totally backtracking because I forgot. But under appointments, liaisons to the commissions, they're, they're not appointments. They're kind of like unofficial. Okay, it's so it's unofficial. It might be unofficial, but yeah. I think we're the new members. So I'm on two, so I'd like to keep on this one. <laughs> <laughs> if someone would like to be a member of the liaison to the rec commission or Conservation Commission? I, I'll be with the Conservation Commission. Are you stepping so, off the Conservation Commission? I'm just a liaison, so yeah, I'm handing it it's off to a new member. Technically. So that's what I'm saying, you're yeah, stepping yeah. off as liaison. Okay. And I think they'll be sorry because they <laughs> no. really like They're awesome. You. They're really an awesome group of people. So. Used to come no, to a good commission. Well, I mean, the thing is that I walk with Linda every single morning, <laughs> so you know I have a good link to what's going on. I think if we do this thing of having the commissions report to the select board in the town every four months, it, that might make our presence at these meetings a little bit less mandatory. Like I've been going to as many of the planning commission meetings as I can go to. <clears throat> Who are you? So you're a rec commission? Rec and conservation. And conservation. Yeah. So you're going to do conservation. I'll still do the planning commission just because. But somebody can take that over for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to all of mm -hmm. the. You know what? I Maybe I'll have to do the rec commission because they often meet at the same time the cemetery commission does. They, the. Um, the, well, the conservation commission, commission does so they your do the meetings. Third yeah, Thursday at that's when five. we oh at five. So we've been going earlier. <laughs> so well, we'll talk. Yeah, I mean, we can uh, work it out. Yeah. <laughs> no, we we go out earlier. Okay. So, in fact, I'll change what the cemetery commission. Dan, report. thank you. Thanks, Dan. Good luck. Thanks, Good luck Dan. Thank you, Danny. Good luck. Be careful with everybody traveling around. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> and thank you, Bridget, <laughs> for taking that on. <laughs> um. Anybody want to do warrants, Kebby? Yeah, I'll make a motion to pay the following payroll warrants. Week ending March 5th, 2017, in the amount of $6,172.90. 
payroll for the week ending March 12, 2017, in the amount of $5,890.51, and expense warrant 1717, in the amount of $39,144.66, for a grand total of payroll and warrants, $51,208.07. There were no real outstandingly high bills. It was mostly our um, property workers' comp insurance, quarterly payment, as well as some salt and gravel. Second. Thank you. Flawless execution in honor of Troy. It was. I was going to dedicate it to Troy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Did that used to be Troy's It was, And yeah. then he trained me. <laughs> I did it once and stumbled. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. Any communications? Yes, as we started out the meeting, That's there's right. a few <laughs> communications that were thrown in at the last minute. I'm not going to read it fully, but we have received a letter from the Franklin Land Trust um, from Franklin County, Massachusetts. And they are simply notifying the town that they are going to have their 12th annual uh, self-guided recreational bike ride uh, will be right. on August 19th and the bike ride does come through part of Guilford. Oh, right. uh, particularly down in Packer Corner. Yeah. Right. Yes. Oh, I have a comment on the last minute. Please. Uh, I, for some reason I was at the select board meeting the last time this happened and I piped up and since there was a sort of, re it's kind of a request for permission, although it's rather loose I guess, um, and I asked if the select board would <coughs> In giving that permission, would ask them to remove their signs after the event because this group has in the past tended just to abandon their various signs on the roads. Sure. And I'm never sure, like, should we throw Did them anymore? Did that last year, Don? And last year was better. And so what I'm reporting is that I think Katie or somebody did put that into the communication back then and said, we're delighted to have you doing this, but please remove your signs. And it was much better last year, so if there's a communication from the town of Guilford to these folks, tell them that it was great and we'd like them to do that again. All right, I will, commu I will um, do that. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for alerting us of that. Yeah. Being new in this position, I was unaware of it. Let's make sure, but did they go down on Route 5? No. No, it's only on the dirt roads. Okay. The Green River and... And so, and they do follow all state law. And by the how they uh, organize the ride, there's never more than uh, they say three to seven riders per group, and so that falls within Vermont state mm -hmm. law. Um, so there's no action that the board needs to take. It's just a, simply a notification that they will be having the event again, and that it will be coming through our town. Mm -hmm. And that uh, they've removed the signs. Yes. Yes, but I will make the communication to them. Um, we also had um, a communication from the uh, Green River Village Preservation Trust. Uh, and we'll, it's a mini, mini page document, but they are proposing to excavate accumulated sediment from the Timber Crib uh, Dam Mill Pond wow. this summer to relieve pressure on the dam and restore the pond for swimming purposes. Ooh. So they have sent applications. Uh, to the state of Vermont and the Army Corps of Engineers to do this. Um, and they've attached that should anyone be And they're interested. paying for it? They're looking for grants to do it. They are looking for, currently looking for grants to make this happen. And then the other communication that we had, we already kind of dealt with, but it was just a, a, a <coughs> letter from Wyndham Regional Commission asking us to update our appointments uh, to them. So we need letters of appointment for to the Wyndham Solid Waste to, for, sure. uh, regarding yep. for me to sign or something yep. like that. Um, before we adjourn, I want to say for the record that tomorrow this office is closed in anticipation of the storm. The, mm -hmm. the whole town office will be closed. It's on the website, but I just wanted to, not mm -hmm. that anybody will see it on TV until Wednesday but, or Thursday, but and the office is closed tomorrow. Um, is there any other business before the meeting? Do I hear a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Gabby. All in favor? Aye. Thank well you, done. everybody. Okay, so we have to sign the conflict of interest. Yep.